Hello everyone and welcome to Lost in the Episode. Today I'm going to be going over the new Danish noir murder mystery from Netflix, The Chestnut Man. This is a genre that Netflix has hit gold with on many occasions, with Bloodline, Bodyguard, Safe, and Mindhunter, among many others. Does this new limited series stand up to the best? Let's talk about it. The Chestnut Man is based upon the novel by, and forgive me if I butcher these names, Soren Sveistrup. It stars Danica Kerchik as Bon Delgard Anderson, Eben Dorner, and David Denchik. A young woman is found brutally murdered in a playground, and one of her hands are missing. Above her hangs a small man made out of chestnuts that will lead to a harrowing investigation. Soren Sveistrup is the Danish mastermind behind the series The Killing, which was adapted to an AMC show and picked up later to be finished by Netflix. That bleak murder mystery series never really found the audience that it deserved, but I truly hope that the same will not be said about his new offering, The Chestnut Man. This nuanced and captivating slow burn story will fly by for all of the binge watchers out there who can't get enough of their crime shows. And even though at the end of the day, the chestnut man might be a bit forgettable, some of the imagery here will stick with you long after it's over. The series follows Rosa Hardon, a member of parliament returning to work after a year off because of the murder of her young daughter. On the same day, an investigator named Naya Thulin finds a woman brutally murdered with her hand severed off. Next to her body is that of a Danish child's handmade toy, a chestnut man. When the forensics come in, they find that Rosa's supposedly dead daughter's fingerprints are all over the small toy. A string of women continue to be found murdered, and Naya Thulin must race against time to figure out how this chestnut man is connected to all the murders, and if Rose's daughter might still be alive. As a huge fan of the murder mystery genre, I always get excited for limited series like this. And Netflix has been one of the leading producers of crime television, so The Chestnut Man certainly caught my eye. Denmark has also been on their A-game in the last couple of years, with some amazing films and television shows really bringing the country into the forefront in the entertainment industry. I am pleased to say that The Chestnut Man is another excellent Nordic crime series that had me riveted from beginning to end. The show starts off a bit slow, setting up the complex cast of characters, somber mood, and complicated web of clues in a way that really gets you increasingly invested. But once everything is set into place, the chestnut man continues to build until you are on the edge of your seat for its explosive conclusion. And while people who aren't super into slow burn series might not love this approach, if it is done well in an intentional way, as this show is able to accomplish, all of the hard hitting moments hit harder because they are earned. There were scenes in The Chestnut Man that gave me chills and sent shivers up my spine. Because the suspense and thrills have been slowly built, when they reach their boiling point, you will barely be able to breathe. There are a couple of things that could have made this limited series better, however. Although there is a lot of strong character development here, some of the cast feels cold and distant. Of course, this is how many characters can come off in dark noirs like this, but I yearned to reach these people in a more emotionally resonant way. And I do think two more episodes would have done the trick with this. I've long been critical of Netflix's six episode runs, and I think The Chestnut Man also suffers because of its limited length here. If we had gotten two more hours to build up these characters and subplots a bit more, I feel like this series would have been far more impactful. 
Despite my small qualms, the Chestnut Man not only thrills, but terrifies. It's a grisly murder mystery that keeps you guessing until the very end, and it also tackles difficult themes that might be very disturbing for viewers. I won't give anything away here, but audiences will be sickened by some of the twists in this story. It's not always an easy watch, but just as in films like Seven and The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, as well as series like Broadchurch and Spystrup's own The Killing, the chestnut man finds humanity within the depravity. So I will be giving the chestnut man 3.5 chestnuts out of 5. Though this limited series could have benefited from a longer runtime to flesh out its characters a bit more, The Chestnut Man is a riveting murder mystery that is disturbing, spine-tingling, and brilliantly plotted. Thank you so much for watching Lost in the Episode. We will see you soon.